on today's show. We discuss the Rockets' 13-game win streak and whether three billboards can help Philly land the king. We also dissect LeBron saying the league protects shooters over drivers and what Paul Millsap's return means to Denver. And John Stewart inspires us to count down our favorite top 10 celebrity reactions. It's Tuesday, February 27th. The starter starts now. Good evening, sweet world, and welcome to The Starters, presented by Jack Daniels Tennessee Honey. Whether you're joining us live right now on NBA TV, watching later on YouTube, maybe listening to the podcast, doesn't matter. We're happy to have you. I'm Jay Skeets, and alongside me, as always, has Tass Mellis. Thank you for joining us. Two is right, the international man of mystery, taking it to the max, Lee Ellis. Friend. Lily. Lily. And last, certainly not least, over yonder, that is the bearded one, that's Trey Kirby. Hey! Hey, yo! TK, what's up? Well, I'm here at the internet looking for your best tweets at hashtag the starters. And there was a pretty funny moment in last night's Rockets Jazz game happened right at the end when Chris Paul is dribbling out the clock and high fived a woman standing courtside, which is very nice. But it's also a turnover because if you're standing out of bounds and touch something out of bounds, yeah, that's a turnover. But guys, it gets better because as it turns out, that woman was James Harden's mom, <laughs> as we find out from a Chris Paul tweet later on. Come on, James Harden, get your moms! To which James Harden replied, she cooked you, man, LOL. <laughs> LOL indeed. So funny, so silly that it brings us to today's question. What's the silliest turnover ever? There have been a ton of really, really weird ones, but for me, it's gotta be from a game from Jonas Valanciunas' rookie season. Raptors up big late, he's dribbling out the clock. Doesn't happen very often, so Karan Butler just offers him up a nice high five. Uh-oh. And oh, steals the money from him, him, and he's off to the races. <laughs> Skeets, you and I were at this game. Yeah. Nobody had any idea what was happening. Yeah. Still weird years later, but we wanna hear from you. So let us know on Twitter, what's the silliest turnover ever? Send us your best clips to hashtag the starters. We'll hear from you a little bit All later. All right, yeah, get those clips, get those tweets in. Got a fun show tonight. Got the up-down report. We got a very fun topic. Top list, top 10 list inspired by John Stewart. We got Lee's very solid play. But let's start by looking at the headlines. Let's play a little Is This News? Trey's rounding up some juicy headlines. He's gonna pitch them to us and we'll determine whether or not they're actually newsworthy. Trey. All right, our first headline comes from the Houston Chronicle. Rockets overcome large deficit against Jazz to extend win streak to 13. Is this news? This is news. This is the type of game that they wouldn't have won last year. I agree. In my they won it with defense. They had their lowest scoring half in the first half, and they scrapped it out. This is a more versatile team this year because they have a top 10 D. You just wouldn't have seen that last year. You got to outscore teams if you're the 16, 17 Rockets. But you're the 17, 18 Rockets. You now have a more versatile lineup. They're playing Luke Bamute at the center spot because uh, their backup center, Brandon Wright, was out. Their starting center, and Clint Capella, was out. They can go small, they can go big. Again, their D is far better. The Rockets are a threat. You know, they, they have become a more well-rounded team. Anderson was out, Eric Gordon was yeah, out, yeah. and Mike D'Antoni still went nine deep, even though Black and Green only played around about 20 minutes each. But that shows confidence in your bench. And that's what I think is gonna be important, a, a yeah. test for the Rockets down the stretch here is Harden and Paul, we know the Rockets are gonna finish one or two pretty much in the Western Conference. It's almost impossible for them to not. Yep. So you expect D'Antoni is probably gonna uh, stagger their minutes and lower them a little bit as the season wears on to get them fresh for the playoffs because no matter what happens during the regular season, it's all about the playoffs for this team. And that's what we've talked about all season long. They've got to make a real serious push. They've looked good, they've beaten the Warriors a couple of times, but it's not gonna count for anything if they can't do it in the playoffs. So if you're D'Antoni showing good confidence in his bench, good depth in his bench, and they're putting on, uh, they're finding other ways to win, not just by blowing teams out, by yeah. outscoring them. Yeah, Mike D'Antoni, he thought it was the best win of the season for the squad. You, you listed all the guys that weren't playing, and then you add into the fact that they went back to back in Denver, high altitude, yep. in Utah, who've been playing obviously phenomenal basketball, and they go get that win as well in a grinded out type situation. That's huge. I, I just think where we're at with the Rockets, and it's unfortunate. I feel like the Rockets could be up 3 0 on the Warriors in a series, hypothetically, and people would still be. Warriors in seven. <laughs> because the Warriors are proven and the Rockets are not. That's and that's right. just a matter of fact. And until they can take a series, and they've done great in the regular season, you know, they, they've got the tiebreaker if these two teams are tied at the end of it all yeah. in the regular season. They got that, so that's a huge plus, taking two of the three. They won't meet again. But until they do it, until Harden and Chris Paul can go deep, we're just going to sort of keep saying the same thing. The Warriors are more talented and they're proven, and the Rockets, mm -hmm. while talented, deeper, you know, they can beat you many ways now. 
They still got to do it. Well, That's I think at. before we even put them in the conference finals, they have to get there first. Yeah, they be. lost in the second round last yep. year. Mm. They still got to do that. There's there's lots of uh, you know demons they got to kill. Yeah. You know the Chris Paul demons, the James Harden demons. They're not there yet. Trey, next one. All right, our next headline is from ESPN, and it reads: Three billboards outside Cleveland, Ohio, were bought by a Pennsylvania-based company to entice LeBron to move on to Philadelphia. Is this news? Oh, yeah. I love I love the NBA <laughs> so news. much. I love the NBA mm-hmm. that this is actually news. <laughs> and here's a look at the billboards that again are just outside of Cleveland. You got the line up there, and you had the king in the mix, and then you got complete the process, and you got hashtag Philly wants LeBron. These are these are good billboards. I yeah, will say that. You know, we've seen some in the past before. Chicago trying to entice LeBron, and then there was one sort of knocking LeBron. They sort of look crappy half the time. These are nice. These yeah. are well done, but. I don't think they're ultimately going to be the decision maker. No. Well, he LeBron liked them, though. He did. He called them dope. Yeah. And he called them very <laughs> flattering. Yeah. Yeah, he said so, the idea that in year 15, guys still want me to come play with them is well, dope. Well, see, of course. D-O-P-E. Uh, no, no one officially from the NBA was involved in that. It was Absolutely a company not. No tampering. Yeah. 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 No tampering. But, stay away But from I that. hope they have a little more success than the, the Staywood fans had with Gordon Hayward last season because they put up the big billboard as well and it didn't work. Right. But, but again, I think this one was a little bit more creative. You know, they put his 23 with a crown on there, sort of pandering a little bit to him. But uh, why not? I mean, you know what? If you want to try to uh, entice LeBron, play up to it a little Do bit. Do you think it makes sense if LeBron were to leave Cleveland to look at a team like Philadelphia with a young Embiid, already an all-star, 23, Simmons, 21, you know, is, does that make sense for where LeBron is at in his career to, yeah, maybe I'll sort of hitch my ride yeah. to some of these very young, talented guys and see yeah. if I can get a couple more championships, staying in the Eastern Conference as well. You guys if, like it. If you want to win, win rings, why doesn't it make sense? Wow. Yeah, I, I mean, think, you're putting well, a lot great. of faith into Embiid staying healthy, yeah, of course, yeah. and, and working, him and sure. Simmons working because Simmons is not a shooter. Yeah. So. This over the Lakers situation, though? This is not dissimilar to when he went back to Cleveland with a young Kyrie Irving. Obviously, Ooh. they got Kevin Love yeah. as well. So I, I think it's and, and Rich Paul. There's obviously a connection there yeah. with Ben Simmons. So I wouldn't. I don't think LeBron is discounting them completely. I, I mean, I don't think he's made up his mind at all. But I think Philadelphia are presenting a pretty strong case. Yeah. Billboards included. Billboards included. They got the cap space as well. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I can I could see it happening. Okay. And billboards aren't obsolete. I think that's why this is news to me. <laughs> sure. I mean, people still use billboards. Mm. And I think actually, you know, we talked about in the office trade. Call them the banner ads of today. Yeah. You know, on the internet, you have the banner ads. Just they're you, they're around. Ignore them, you ignore yeah. them. I think actually billboards are more important today because <laughs> because of the proliferation of cell phones. People will take photos of mm. it and put it on social yeah. media instead of just seeing it in person. Now you see it online too. Have mm. you seen yeah. Have you seen the movie that probably inspired this? The three billboards I'm outside not yet. Ebbing, Missouri. I'm ready. I'm I watched ready. it on the flight back from All Star Weekend. Right. I fell Were you asleep. Inspired? No, 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 it was pretty solid. It was, was pretty it dope? Solid. It was dope and very flattering indeed. I've watched dope. Uh, yeah, that's a good movie. All right, final one here, Charlie. All right, our final headline is from the San Antonio Express News, and it says Kawhi Leonard is back with the Spurs and aiming to return in March. Is this news? What do you think? Well, it is, it is because a week ago, the coach, Greg Popovich, didn't expect him to come back at all this season. So now the fact that Kawhi is back with the team, he could return in the first or second week of March, according to Jabari Young. So yeah. that's a pretty significant change from l- literally one week ago. Does mm. adding Kawhi Leonard, let's say, I don't know, throw it out there, at 70 80% health, does adding him to the mix really change anything in the Western Conference yeah, uh, I think playoff so. structure? Well, I think two things. He doesn't come back if he's 70 or 80%. I mean, he's okay. going at it. Okay. And, and we're also saying this now. You know, it's February 27th. If he's coming back mid-March, you know, there's still a, a period where he has to work up to it. Yeah, you'd you have know. a good month before the playoffs. And, yeah, yeah. And, and work up to getting back into the lineup. So there's there's obviously an idea that he's going to get to 100%. And, and I think, you know, these nine games that we've seen him this season, he was not 100%. So I think we are going to see Kawhi. You know, going up to the playoffs, full throttle. Yeah, and you don't lose you know, that the, governor. Just go, Kawhi, go. The Rockets don't want to see the Spurs. That's what Kawhi I'm saying. That's what. That's yeah. why I think the second like round Tony's matchup. never beaten Popovich, no. right? And, and, and yeah. we were just saying before how you know the Rockets look great, but if if it was a two and three matchup hypothetically, even though the Rockets right now are one, it'd be one and four. You know what happened last year? The Rockets blew them out in the first game, and then the Spurs came back and and destroyed them. So. The, the Rockets would be probably looking at that going, oh, we hope if he does come back, he's not 100% healthy and yeah. not as effective as he has been in the past. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. I saw Mike Miller say that he thinks if, if Kawhi does come back, it removes the ceiling with the Spurs team, right? Sure. Right now, if there's no Kawhi, you're like, they're playing phenomenal basketball without a star. I mean, they've got Aldridge, but without their two-way star in Kawhi. But how far would they really go? Yeah. You bring Kawhi, you know, hopefully, again, 100% or close to 100%. 
you know, what, what this, this, the sky is the limit for that team, a pop coach team and it, with Kawhi back in the mix. But I just don't know if it's still, even with Kawhi there, they could really take down the Rockets or the Warriors in a seven-game series. I, I'm still not convinced. And that's where I think they're sort of maybe deciding that a little bit of, do we even try to bring him back and risk getting him more injured? Because it's been lingering mm. with this injury. So who knows? Mm -hmm. We will see. The Kawhi news, never going away here on the starters. we got to take a break, though. When we come back, LeBron says chicks dig the long ball. But what about the refs? Do they as well? <laughs> I know. Yeah, think about it. Back with the starters right into the up-down report where we figure out where we stand on some hot-button NBA topics. Let's see those thumbs on Twitter. Hashtag the starters, thumbs up or thumbs down. First one, guys. After attempting just four free throws in a 16-point loss to the Spurs on Sunday, LeBron James had this to say about the questionable officiating. I mean, I think we're at a point now where we protect the shooter more than the driver. I mean, there's no reason I should be going to the line four times in a game when I drive a hundred times to the paint. I'm getting hit and slapped and grabbed and whatever, whatnot. So, but we protect the shooter. That's what that's what it's turned into. Um, you know, chicks dig the long ball, and uh, <laughs> that's what it's about. Chicks dig the long ball. I love that. But are you guys up or down on LeBron's comments about NBA officials protecting shooters over drivers? What do you think? Thumbs down, thumbs up. Here we go. I don't think so. I don't think the referees are out there looking particularly at shoes and saying, well, we've got to make a special case of this guy. Look, LeBron gets hit a ton, yep. and he does go to the foul line a lot, not as much as he has in the past. He gets a lot of uh, star calls, but sometimes they miss calls, and that's just the way it goes. I think that's the way it's been forever. Very, very tough game to officiate. I don't think the referees have a bias. Yeah, but players are shooting more threes now, so there are just more rules kind of naturally in place now. A few years ago, we had slide unders all the time. We had Kobe Bryant following through into guys' faces. The game has just changed so much now that there are so many threes that there's had to be more rules at, and I think it's just easier kind of to see the fouls when it's one guy shooting against one guy out on the perimeter rather than a mess of bodies inside when LeBron's just bowling in there, throwing bows and just getting, doing whatever he can to get to the rim. I think it's a little bit easier to make a call when it's that little one-on-one -on -one scenario outside. Side. Yeah, I don't think there's a bias uh, against LeBron James, but there is a focus on the three-point shot. Uh, you know, how many times have we seen a, a three-point shooter get fouled this year for a four-point play? It just seems like, again, nobody can step under. We're just focusing on that area of the floor. It happens every year. There's a points of emphasis that go to the referees, and even if it wasn't one this year, it sure seems like it is, mm -hmm. and, and that's just what's happening. And I wonder if it's sort of the, the flow of gameplay emphasis that's going on throughout sports in general. Maybe just want to keep that game going. Yeah. A few don't want to hear whistles. Uh, yeah, but at the same time, on the other side, there's a heck of a lot of whistles going on on the perimeter. So I don't know how much that plays into it. It's just, it's a cycle. You know, we'll get back inside at some point. We'll get back to the verticality, which was a, a point oh, yeah. of emphasis mm -hmm. a few years for ago. Sure. All right, next one, guys. The game notes for tonight's Nuggets Clippers game officially list Paul Millsap as questionable. But based on his comments at shootaround today, sounds like he could be ready to go. Millsap has been out since mid-November after suffering a torn ligament in his left wrist. Now the Nuggets are clinging to that eighth seed in the crazy Western Conference. So my question for you guys, are you up or down on Millsap helping to make the, the Nuggets a playoff lock? Yeah, lock it in, baby. Lock. Oh, wow. No I thought that was a strong word. Uh, okay. No, they're, they're a lock if they can learn to win on the road. And that's their biggest problem yep. right now. They have the worst road record of any team currently in the playoffs. And 14 of their last 24 games are on the road, including seven in a row. And when Millsap did play, they're only two and five on the road. So that's their biggest concern. They've got to get some Ws away from the Pepsi Center. That's totally fair. We're, we're getting back an all-star here. And a guy who should be in sort of game shape because it's just a wrist injury. He's been going in back-to-back -back practices. He doesn't feel gassed. And the team has been playing really well. And he's not going to get in the way, as he told Mile High Sports. I envision just standing in the corner and getting out of the guy's way. <laughs> what they have been doing offensively has been great. Hopefully, I don't mess it up. And the only way I can do that is by holding the ball and standing still, which I am not going to do. <laughs> this guy's a great guy, a guy we never talk about. This guy's a freaking all-star. Mm -hmm. And they're playing the Clippers tonight, another big game. So if he does get the game, play he'll just stand in the corner and hit some shots like he always does yeah I think the Nuggets are a playoff team it's definitely an interesting situation though with Millsap coming back the talent is going to be a little bit better with him there uh, the defense is definitely going to be better. They've been their best when he was playing it on the floor, but at the start of the season, it was very slow. They started 1-3, mm. and 9-7 yeah. and seven only. With Paul Millsap in the lineup, not a lot of time to build chemistry in the last 20 games of the season, but I would still rather have an all-star out there than not. Mm -hmm. Hopefully he returns tonight. All right, final one here, guys. Damian Lillard was asked on Twitter this week for his Mount Rushmore 
for wrestlers. His response, Ric Flair, Hulk Hogan, Stone Cold, and The Undertaker. He gave some honorable mentions to The Rock, The Ultimate Warrior, and Bret Hart there. But yeah, his Mount Rushmore, this is Lillard's wrestling Mount Rushmore, Ric Flair, woo, Hulk Hogan, Stone Cold, and The Taker. Are you up or down on Lillard's choices for his wrestling Mount Rushmore, you're shrugging. Teach his own, teach his own. Good for him, not for me, not for me. Good Lee, for him, Lee, who do you want in there, Lee? Who do you want? Without Ricky the Dragon's theme, oh, in there, I boy. can't, I can't. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Ricky the Dragon was the greatest when I was growing up. And uh, look, respect to, again, Dames, it's fine. He's allowed to have all uh, who he wants. Respect but, to the taker yeah. as well. Respect yeah. to the taker. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if, you can't, if you're not having Ricky the Dragon up there, I can't respect that, brother. Right. <laughs> An another Rick I'd have mine. I, first, I keep Hulk. I'm putting in the Macho Man, I'm putting in the Rock, wow. I'm putting in Ravishing Rick Rude. Wow. wow. Nobody could do a sexy jerk like Ravishing Rick Rude. Nobody could copy that. Val Venus tried, Razor Ramon tried, they couldn't do it. Okay, all right, there you go. Let's hear from you guys. Up or down on Lillard's Mount Rushmore of wrestling. Okay, when we come back, we're gonna count down our favorite top 10 celebrity reactions of all time. This should be fun. Okay. Starters is brought to you by Jack Daniels Tennessee Honey, official partner of the NBA. Welcome back to the Starters. We had a very funny moment in the garden last night. I'm not talking about the Knicks. When a turnaround jumper from Warriors big man, JaVale McGee, absolutely stunned comedian John Stewart. <laughs> he couldn't believe it. And it's this very reaction which has inspired us to count down our top 10 celebrity reactions. At number 10, it was just earlier this month when the Greek freak Giannis Antetokounmpo jumped over Tim Hardaway Jr. and tennis legend John McEnroe, looking like a real cool hip kid there with the hat turned back. Couldn't believe it. I'm surprised it didn't drop a you can't be serious. Yeah. <laughs> At number nine, Sir Paul McCartney, he just wants a t-shirt. He just wants a t-shirt. He gets one, one comes up. He's ready for it. He's ready for it. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. This one's mine. It's mine. Oh! I had it. He's like a billionaire. It's mine. Well, that's the a is mine. Uh, during 2010 slam dunk contest, we had the Bulls mascot, Benny the Bull, doing a little single ladies there in front of Jay-Z and Diddy. They were not loving it. Yeah, I mean, Jay-Z, he nearly laughs. Yeah. Nearly laughs. Yeah, a little smirk there. Diddy's not feeling it. At number seven, Justin Bieber looking cool. <laughs> what in the world is in that hat? What you got in that hat? <laughs> That's where he keeps then his Then it gets real strange, this odd water drinking technique. What's going on there? Real high elbow. Yeah, real that high elbow. That is a very high elbow. At number six, Vince Carter, 2000 dunk contest, pulls out the elbow dunk. Everyone was like in shock, Shaq and Steve Francis, Jason Kidd, and Batman! <laughs> <laughs> Michael Keaton was flabbergasted. At number five, Chris Rock, hanging out. With David Spade. With David Spade. He's trying to talk to Kobe. He's trying to talk to Kobe Bryant, who will not have any of it. Just totally ignoring him. In his own. Uh, number four for celebrity reactions. We had to give Drake his own pack here because you know, he's Raptors ambassador of some sort. Remember when he got into it with Kevin Durant? <laughs> Just pointing at him. Yeah, I got your tattoo on me. <laughs> we can forget this moment when he was in Holiday's ear trying to help the Raps get a five second count on the Bulls. You can't, you're not gonna get in, you can't get in. You're not gonna get in. Oh, five seconds. He did oh, it. Oh, he's he it. That's a defense. <laughs> nice defense, Drake. Yeah. And then in the playoffs against the Pacers, Stucky falls out of bounds, and there's Drake. Oh, man. With the very sarcastic clap right in his ear. And there's a Canadian Garth Brooks behind him. At number three, Rihanna, game one of the 2017 finals. She made it clear she was cheering for LeBron. Bows to him. Throws up the rock symbol. Oh, yeah. Throws the dab. Yeah. And then she was oh, wow. reportedly yelling brick at Kevin Durant at the free throw line. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa, hey, whoa. hey, hey. He talked trash to her once, and then right here as well, she's right behind him. Gives her the look. This yeah. is the final scene. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> the final Rihanna scene. getting into Kevin Durant's head just a little bit. Didn't work though. At number two, it's it's known as the Spike Lee game because this was game five of the 94 Eastern Conference Finals. Reggie Miller and Spike Lee going at it. Spike giving him all he's got. Reggie caught oh, fire in the final uh -huh. period, went for 25. Yeah, threw up the old choke. 
sign to Spike in the neck. <laughs> oh, he got humbled somewhat. Yeah, <laughs> Spike just had to sit down. Whoa, 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 don't read lips. At number one, Jack Nicholson, a compilation of the Lakers super fan, because he's given us so many moments. 2009 finals. How can you call that on Pow? How can you call that on Pow? He was quite angry. <laughs> Straight up. He gets more intense in the playoffs. You can't <laughs> see. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> 2012 Western Conference semis. As the referee goes by, you were behind that play. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you were. 1991 NBA Finals, he flips the bird to Scotty. <laughs> Just scratching his neck. Scratching his neck. Looks like Nancy yeah. Adams apple. Yeah. Looks like Bernie Lomax yeah. from Weekend of Bernie. <laughs> and the 2004 Slam Dunk Contest. Just making fun of Chris Anderson's hair. Hey, I like your hair. Uh, Jack coming in at number one. I'm sure we missed some. Let us know on Twitter, your favorite. NBA celebrity reactions when we come back. Lily hits us with a very solid play. Tonight on TNT, we got Wizards, Bucks, followed by Clippers, Nuggets. Still wait to find out if Millsap is a go in that second game. Good game, sir. All right, we asked you. What's the silliest turnover ever? Chris Paul picked up a hilarious one last night, high fiving James Harden's mom. You guys hit us up on Twitter, hashtag the starters. Trey, you got a few of the best answers. Yeah, some good ones. Max says, same night, last night, Isaiah, turn Isaiah Thomas's turnover was hysterical. Yes, a very funny one. Seth says, I can't remember who it was on the Wizards who launched the ball into the air that Mo Pete caught and drained a three to send the game to overtime, but I'll vote for that one. It was Michael Ruffin, hilarious clip, yep. but the most requested by far. David says, OKC versus Golden State last year when Russ inbounds and just walks halfway up the court, gets called for a travel. It was great. One, two, just strolling. Three, four, four, just strolling. five, six, oh yeah. Good this six. was wild. <laughs> just forgot. Just MVP forgot season just goes for a walk. Great, great Good tweets, guys. Uh, last night's pick on play, ooh, this was a big one. Lee was down at the fortress. You had the Lakers, so did Tass. Trey and I were wrong. So we are all tied up seven and six for the month of February. Let's see. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, this is interesting. Changing. So nothing's going to change between Trey and I tonight, but in theory, if the Heat win, well, Lee then is tied with us. We'll have a three-way tie uh, going to the final yeah. night. Well, we'll worry yeah, about buddy. that if we get final to Final night tomorrow night. That's right. All right, Lee, Lee, VSP. Yeah, beautiful one here from the most improved, very solid play team. It's the Brooklyn Nets. Look at this ball just go round and round and round over to Spencer Dinwiddie. You know he's knocking that in. That's what I call a very solid play. We had a blast with the Twitter show today. Shout out to everyone that joined us live. We stepped on the beach. We did NBA trivia. And Trey dropped some Harry Potter knowledge on us. They've got their own problems. You know? Okay. Right. they got to worry about he who shall not be named. Yeah. I don't want to say it on the podcast. Yeah. I don't want him to come here. Okay. <laughs> Is this a Bloody Mary situation? You say it three times and you only got to say it once, to be yeah. honest. That's why uh, when Harry said it, people were like, wow. wow. This guy's the real deal. So when he came into the wizarding world, he was just dropping Voldemort's like Whoa! crazy. Oh, oh, easy, and that's what man. the people said. That's what the people said at the Leaky Cauldron. Keep it down, Harry. There you go. Shout out to again, that everyone that joined us live. That's it for us tonight. We'll see you tomorrow at 7. Thanks for joining us, folks. And remember, a player high-fived another player's mom and had a turnover. <laughs> what a league. Brace the night, people. Uh...